Welcome back to BST. Gasper, Phil Perry here. So this is what the Bruins and Celtics are doing this season. The Bruins, they only have the best record in the NHL at 43-8-5, while the Celtics have the best record in the NBA at 42-17. Bruins' last Stanley Cup win came way back in 2011, while the Celtics last won in 2008. Both teams have made the finals recently, as the Bruins did it four years ago. They lost Game 7 in their own building, and the Celtics, of course, lost Game 6 in their own building in the championship last June. And now you can vote along with us over our poll here at NBCSportsBoston.com slash vote, or you can scan the QR code. You see that on the screen right now. Which of these teams is more likely to win a championship this season? Phil, it looks like the Bruins have the edge here. This is, I kind of feel, I, I feel a little bit like this is election night. It is. Does it look, the results are changing. And just as important, in my opinion. I, I would say I understand the voting here because yeah. the Bruins have been an absolute buzzsaw. Yeah. Get your Steve Kornacki on here. It's the Celtics. The Celtics are more likely to win it, in my opinion, because in hockey, weird things happen. Goalies get hot, an injury here, an injury there, and the team that was the best team throughout the course, and we've seen it with the Bruins. <laughs> the team that was the best team throughout the course of the regular season isn't necessarily the team that's there at the end. Whereas in the NBA, Chris, it feels like by the time we get to this point in the year, you get to January, February, you can kind of predict who the last three or four teams in the league are going to be. I agree with you. I mean, look, when you look at it, I think – the Celtics, given what their depth situation is, given the addition of Malcolm Brogdon. Now, health is always a factor, right, for any team. You, you can't predict health. But given the lack of volatility, as you mentioned, in the NBA playoffs versus the NHL playoffs, and I still, it's a weird thing to say about the Bruins, as good as they are, I still think they're missing a piece. I know we're going to get to that later, but I still, think, I still think there's another piece there to be able to survive the rigors of the NHL playoffs, which are so unpredictable. But the fans disagree with that. Well, now it's flipped. Again, I'm getting my Steve Kornacki on. Now people are saying the Celtics. Well, now you we're, convinced talking, them. we're talking them you into convinced it. Now them. that's okay. the problem. Well, listen, I think you also me. probably – That's why you're the senator. I think you also probably, Chris, have some real Bruins fans voting on this poll. And you, have, you talk to a real Bruins fan right now, and they will say, well, yeah, it's going great, you know, until they get booted in the first round. You know, that's just the yeah. mentality that they have now. They've been a little bit beaten down since 2011, understandably so. And so I, I get that there are some reservations with this team right now. Whereas, again, with the Celtics, you have the two stars who we just talked a lot about in terms of the respect that they have across the league, and deservingly so. Yeah. They also have depth. Like, the Brogdon addition was a massive addition, in my opinion. I think he's their third best player right now. And if Robert Williams can stay healthy – Who's stopping them? John Morant just the other day said, you know, he's asked about the entire West. Who in the West do you fear or who do you fear, period? And he said Celtics, as if, like, the rest of the West really is not a conversation. It's, it's that was before of, Kevin Durant got there, though. That was before point. that. I will say maybe we won't have to choose. Who knows, right? That's why they say that we're title town. Boston has been title town since 2000. Look at this. 12 combined championships from the four major teams. No love for the Revs, but they have not won an MLS Cup. But if you break it down, the cliff, the cliff was back in 2017. Since then, Boston has won a meager two titles, with both coming in 2018, the Red Sox and the Patriots. Nothing since then. So let me ask you this. You know, I, I'm, we were saying maybe we don't have to choose. Maybe it's both, which would be amazing. But are we now a championship-starved city, or are we just spoiled? Oh, we're spoiled. We're spoiled. <laughs> but listen, I think the fact that the recent history has been as good as it has been has really – ramp things up for owners in town to make sure that they're in this conversation. Maybe John Henry aside, given some recent comments and given how he has handled his team here, Chris. But I think that thing is a real thing, and I think that it has bred competition between organizations. I, I totally agree, yes. I think you're 100% right. That competition, and it started with the Patriots in 2001. It was like, look, if you want to be relevant in this town, you have to be a championship contender. And I think now, when you look at the Patriots and Red Sox, really not championship contenders, I don't know if there's still that same import, that same just sort of urgency for the, some of these teams to win. I think for the Bruins and the Celtics, for the Bruins it's because this is probably their last kick at the can, right, with this group of people. And it's going to be looked at differently if that, this group with Marchand and Bergeron and Krejci has one cup or two. For the Celtics, I think it's sort of the idea you haven't won since 2008. That group with Paul Pierce and Ray Allen and Kevin Garnett probably should have won more than one. And you have a young core. And in the NBA, Phil, you never know how long your championship window is going to be. All it takes is one trade request to blow it up. Well, you just said, though, that Jalen Brown's going to be around for, I don't know, the next decade or so. So they should be in the conversation. Jason Tatum could make the they trade. They should be in the conversation for a long, long time. Just given those two guys, you add the right pieces around them, 
they'll be in the mix. The Bruins, I'm not so sure. Like, David, you know, forget about Bergeron and Krejci. David Pasternak might not be back. Great next point. Year. Yep. This has to be a go all in type of year. And so maybe, you know, when you're talking about getting that piece, maybe they have to be aggressive in attacking that. I will argue with one thing you say, though. Like, the fact that the Red Sox have won quite a bit, obviously the Patriots have won a ton over the course of the Absolutely. last few years. Super I, think, I think ownership in both of those scenarios are approaching this very differently. I think there is urgency in New England. I don't think people are happy given how things have gone the last few years in Foxborough, whereas at Fenway and with FSG, it feels like, well, we've won one way. Let's try to win another way now. I think we could see an aggressive offseason from the Patriots because they know 8-9 is not good enough. They want to remain relevant here.